to help you understand that from the applicant point of view, what are those key points that you need to take in consideration while filling up the questionnaire. Secondly, then I will take you through the questionnaire in detail where I'll give you some idea about the various sections that the questionnaire has and also will take you through the various aspects that are there under each of the domain categories. And in the end, I'll try to solve your queries which uh, will be mainly based on uh, if you have any difficulties in understanding a question or if there are any technical issues. So this is our sustainability performance assessment model on which the assessment takes place for all the companies who apply for sustainability awards. This is common across all the award categories that we have. So be it domain excellence or corporate excellence, the same assessment framework applies. The first part of the framework is the attribute, which is here. This is mainly the sustainability excellence model through which our certified assessors assess the performance of the company. Second are the aspects wherein those key areas on which the information from the companies is asked is looked at by the assessors. And third is the radar, which is the scoring logic used by the assessors to score the companies. For the purpose of this awareness session, I will give you some idea on the first two, which is the attribute and the aspect. Radar is mainly embedded in the tool and the scoring will happen automatically based on the assessment and the information given by the applicants. Now this is the framework which has been adapted from the EFQM model. Certain elements of EFQM model has been changed here. If you see the three main elements of this model are the enablers, the results, and learning and review. In the enabler side, basically what the assessors try to see for an applicant company is that how well institutionalized approaches and systems are within a company to reach a particular goal or to achieve a particular result. So within enablers, there are certain key areas which are looked at, one being the leadership, that how well is sustainability embedded in the governance structure or at the senior management level. Then the engagement with the external and external and internal stakeholder are seen that how is the company engaging with its external and internal stakeholder to reach its sustainability goals? How well is the company mobilizing its key resources? And what are those processes or systems that the company may have in place to reach the ultimate set goals? Now, when I say goals, these goals get measured here in the results part. So all your goals with respect to the financial performance goal, all your environmental goal, social goal, economic goal, get captured under the result side of this model. The last part, which is the learning and review, which is also highlighted as part of learning and innovation here, basically tries to close the loop between enablers and results. The focus of learning and review or learning and innovation is to see that whatever has been achieved, whatever has been achieved through uh, the company's institutionalized uh, systems or processes, are there any learnings that the company is taking from uh, those results and moving forward in terms of any improvisation it may need to do or any innovation it may need to do in terms of products. The details of each of these elements are available in the guidance document, which you can refer to from time to time through a link which is embedded on the instructions page of the questionnaire. I'll take you through that link when we are on the questionnaire. Very quickly, these are the various weights which are allocated to the uh, attributes. So there is a weight of 10 on leadership. There is a weight of five each on each of the internal and external stakeholders, weight of 10 on key resources, and so on. The purpose of this weight, these weights are purely from the scoring point of view, that when uh, the scoring happens, these weights are considered to arrive at the weighted average score. 
Also, the purpose of showing you this particular framework is to emphasize that the questions that you may see in the questionnaire, they basically take care of each of the attribute which are mentioned here. So if you may see, there are questions in the questionnaire under each of the domain categories which will ask for the leadership position of a company, which will ask for the key resource mobilization, which will ask for the engagement with internal and external stakeholders. There are questions which focus on the processes, policies, systems. And similarly, there are questions which focus on the results side of the company. You may not see the division of those questions as per these attributes because uh, they will not uh, give you uh, much idea but when the assessors assess your questionnaires they will have a clear idea as to which question is related to which attribute these are the various aspects under which uh, the three domains are based so under environment management, there are four aspects. The first is product responsibility. Second is environment management, biodiversity, and compliance to regulation. Corporate social responsibility has two aspects, CSR and corporate uh, compliance to regulation. If you may see, compliance to regulation as an aspect is common across all the three domains. And within compliance to regulation, the questions which are asked, which is just a table with the list of regulations is common across all the three domains. Now, as uh, applicants, you must have received that email in your inboxes from uh, the Sustainability Awards team, giving you an idea of how to access the questionnaire. The purpose of this email is also to help you share the questionnaire with various people within an organization. So if the questionnaire has to be filled up by multiple people within an organization, the same email can be passed on, can be forwarded to the relevant people in the organization. And they at the same time can fill up multiple sections of the questionnaire. So there is no separate login uh, which is required just by clicking on uh, here, multiple people can access the questionnaire at the same time. The awards questionnaire is divided into six sections, as you must have already seen. The first section is the applicant registration information, where most of the information is pulled from the application of intent that you all had filled at the time of registration. Then the second section is the uh, note of approval or authenticity, statement of authenticity. Our guidance on this section is to fill the section only towards the end after you have filled your entire questionnaire and a review has been done by your team or whosoever is responsible for reviewing the questionnaire. Because once checked on the box of, uh, of filling up section B, you will not be able to change your response. So please fill up this section only towards the end, and that is before submission of the questionnaire. Now some points uh, for you to remember very quickly that uh, as an applicant, you can choose to work or you can start working from any part of the questionnaire. So any section of the questionnaire can be dealt with at any time. There are certain questions from section A to E which have uh, a mandatory feel to it. So until and unless you to, uh, fully fill that particular question, you will not be allowed to move forward which means that once you start attempting mandatory questions, you need to fully answer those questions before you move forward to the next page or you move to answer the next question on the same page. All the questions under section F, which are the aspects, are mandatory. So as an applicant, you cannot leave any question unanswered. 
because that will not be allowed and your submission of the questionnaire will not be accepted. In case if there are any data points which you may not have, then you can click on no information available which is available with each and every question as an option. In case if you try to save or submit your questionnaire without filling a question, you, the tool will automatically highlight that question which remains to be unanswered and you will be required to fill that question fully before you move forward. For the ease of additional information in case if there is any area which the applicant wants to highlight and has not been captured in the given question, you can utilize the additional information box which is available with each and every aspect that you have to give as much additional information as you want. The restriction with additional information box is that it, is, it has a word limit of 750 and it will only accept text. There are no pictures or no tables which can be inserted in the additional information box. For those who are planning to apply next year, that is in 2016, this web tool will become very handy for them because if they intend to apply in the same category of award, their entire filled up questionnaire from this year will be visible to them and they will be only required to fill 2016 information and in case if they want to make any changes to the information that they had submitted in the past. So they will not be required to submit the information from the scratch to fill their questionnaire. It is very important that from time to time you keep referring to the guidance document in case if you want to understand how the assessment takes place and what is the basic definition of the seven attributes of the sustainability performance assessment model. The guidance document is a handy guide to give you idea on these key things. So even while you're filling up the questionnaire and if it is being filled by multiple people in the organization, please ask your colleagues to refer to guidance document from time to time. Further, further to that, if you have any question on guidance document, you can always contact the awards team. Okay, we'll start with the uh, environment management questionnaire. And before I go into the details of environment management, I would like to take you through the environment management questionnaire to cover the other sections. This is a questionnaire which you must have received. And uh, the landing page for you is the instructions page. Please read each of the instructions because they are very important from the point of view of filling up the questionnaire. Section A, as I mentioned, has all your information with respect to filling it up from uh, uh, filling, filling it up from the point of view of the application of intent. So as you can see the first section like the classification details, the company details, the details of the highest rank ranking official and certain other details have been pulled directly from the application of intent. Section B, as I had mentioned, only require the name and the designation of the person who's signing off on this document and hence it becomes important that you put these details only towards the end of sub uh, before submission. Section C is a very important section. Although from the assessment point of view, this section will not get scored for the applicants, but it becomes important because this forms the context of the organization to the assessors. So all the information that you're going to put here will form the basis of the questionnaire. So uh, very important fields here are the scope of application, which means that you are setting the boundaries of the application and you as an applicant are defining that the assessment should be limited to a particular area. So in case if there is any business that you don't want to include in the assessment, 
you may not need to mention it in the scope of application. If there are any particular factories which you think you don't want to be assessed, then please exclude them from the scope of application so that the assessors only limit their assessment to the boundaries that you have set for yourself. The section on uh, C4 is again important to name the top three competitors. C5 asks for information on the top five products based on the turnover of the last three years. There are other uh, areas which ask for the vision, mission, and policies of the company. And similarly, there is a section on employee information which asks for the details on the structure of employees that you may have within your organization. Section D is the executive summary. Again, from the assessment point of view, this section will not get scored, but this section is a very important uh, section to build the context to the assessors. And the objective of executive summary here is that whatever you mention in section F, a brief of that should come in the executive summary so that there are interlinkages that the assessors can draw when they are reading the executive summary and later on when they are reading section F where there is specific information given by you. Section E is self-explanatory which asks for uh, any abbreviations or any uh, short terms that you may have used in your questionnaire. This will become applicable when you are writing answers to descriptive questions or in case if you are utilizing additional information box and you are putting any abbreviations there, then for the ease of assessors to understand those abbreviations, please put their explanation in these boxes. You can keep adding the rows here as many as you want. The maximum uh, uh, rows that you can add here are the 10 rows. Environment management, as I had mentioned, includes three major aspects, which is the product responsibility, environment management, and biodiversity. Product responsibility has around 15 questions, and looking at it from the point of view of sustainability performance assessment model that I had shown you, uh, shown you initially, the questions are divided into enablers and results. There are questions which ask for commitment of the applicant organization to sustainable products. Then there are questions which ask for details on life cycle analysis, whether the organization is conducting this exercise or not. In case if it is conducting it, then are there any specific standards that it is using it, using to conduct life cycle analysis or not? On the result side, we have questions which deal with non-compliance and customer complaints. Then there are questions with ask for health and safety impact of the products that the organization may have. And lastly, there are questions which ask about the review mechanism that the organization may have to look at product responsibility and if there is a senior management role involved in the learning uh, and review of this aspect. Coming to section F, we can see here that there are several there are several uh, questions under product responsibility. So the question one is about is the organization committed to sustainable products? As an applicant, you are given three options to choose from. Whichever is the most appropriate option for you, you may choose the option here. 
If there is a clear commitment to sustainable product, then please choose yes. If there is not, then please choose no. In case there is no information that you may have while filling up the questionnaire, you can also choose no information available. The second question again deals with that does the organization display product information on label over and above the regulatory environment. Again, there are five options which are given to the company to choose from and whichever is the most appropriate option applicable to your respective organizations, you can choose from here. With respect to any of these questions mentioned here, if there is any information that you would like to give, utilize this additional information box. If it is specific to a particular question that we are asking in the questionnaire, give a reference to that question. So for example, if you're giving additional information with respect to PR02, give a reference to that question and then give your text. In case if it is not specific to any particular question, then you may just uh, freely write whatever you want to write because then that will become just the supplementary information for the assessors to assess. You need to save before you close the additional information box. There are questions in the questionnaire uh, which have a format like PR03 where as an applicant you are given two choices. So the question is report whether the following information is required by the organization's procedure for product and services information and labeling. So if you have any requirement then you choose the organization has set requirement only after you choose the radio button the subtext uh, check boxes will get activated without choosing the radio button the check boxes will not get activated and you cannot choose to select any of the check box here in case if you select the radio button and you choose others as part of one of the options then please give an explanation to what others mean There are other questions like PR08 which ask for monetary value. So these boxes are designed to only accept the monetary value and you cannot enter text or alphanumeric characters here. You can, uh, I think by uh, the design of the box you can uh, input alphanumeric but there is no text which you can enter as part of this box. So there are several uh, similar boxes in the questionnaire. Please ensure that wherever there is a monetary value or a financial number to be given, you restrict yourself only to that. Otherwise, the information will not get accepted. It is very important that you keep saving your work from time to time. As you can see on the top extreme right top corner, there is a timer which is visible here. This indicates that how much time is left before the session logs out automatically. So if you don't save your work, but if you keep inputting your information, the data will not get saved automatically because the web tool doesn't have an auto save function inbuilt in it. Hence, it becomes important that the manual saving is done after five minutes or 10 minutes in order to save your work. Once a logout happens, any work which has not been saved cannot be accessed from the backend. Before the timer logs out, there are time to time um, alerts which will be given to you by the web tool that how much time remains before the session is going to log out. So please utilize those alerts and keep saving your work from time to time.
The second aspect that we are dealing in environment management is environment management, which is the biggest aspect under environment management. It has around 52 questions. Again, these 52 questions are based on the enablers and results. Under enablers, there are questions which ask for whether the organization has a policy to look at the environment or not. Then how is the risk uh, management being done under this domain? What are this, the process of regulatory permit? Is the organization prepared for emergencies? If yes, then what is the emergency preparedness plan? The details on clean development mechanism project, any sustainable sourcing that the organization may be doing. Under results, there are various uh, questions which ask for energy data, emissions data, NOx, SOx, VOC emissions, resource consumption figures, uh, waste related figures, and packaging related figures. There are also questions which ask for if there have been any non-compliances to any regulation and as a result of which the organization had to pay any fines or any fee. So the details on that needs to be answered. And finally, there are questions which ask for the review of this particular aspect. So as an organization, what are the review mechanism that you may have in place to look at environment to gain learnings from the results achieved and how are those learnings being implemented finally in the process to make it more efficient. Now, coming back to the questionnaire on environment management, let us look at some of the questions which we have under environment management. Again, the first set of questions you may see are very uh, process-related question, which asks for whether the organization has policy on environment management describing the approach on following. And there are several options which are given for uh, the companies to choose from. It is not important that you need to have policy for each and everything mentioned here. Even if you have policy for one of the things, you can choose yes and you can click against the area in which the organization has a policy. In case if you don't have any formal policy, please click on there is no formal policy in place. Now it is important that as an applicant, you uh, give information whatever is in place because these particular indicators on which the information is being asked will get verified at the time of site assessment in case if you qualify for the site assessment stage. So if you provide any information here, say for example, the assessors will come and ask you to show evidence of the policy about which you have stated or claim that you may have as an organization. Now, as you can see that if you only click the first part of the question, which is yes, there is a policy in place, but you don't click any of the sub options available, the web tool will not accept your answer until unless you give one particular, one minimum area on which you are claiming that there is a policy in place. And if it is a mistake, then you can choose any of the other two options. But if you say yes, you need to give mandatorily all those areas in which you have a policy. Only then you can save your information and only then you can move to the next page. So now the information is saved and you can proceed or move to the next page. Every time there are situations wherein your question is incomplete, while you're saving your questionnaire, there will be a trigger given by the tool by giving you an indication by highlighting that question in red 
and stopping you to proceed to the next page. Now there are questions which ask for the descriptive answers from the applicant. Here, for example, EM04, it, has, it is asking that please specify which risk and opportunities posed by environment have the potential to generate substantial changes in operations, revenue or expenditure. In case if you say information available, and you want to describe the impact associated with risk or opportunity, you can give as much detail as you want. For every text box that the questionnaire has, including the additional information box, there is a word limit of 750 words. So if you go beyond 750 words, the web tool will automatically give you an alert that your word limit has exceeded and you cannot input more text. There can also be situations while you are attempting to answer a particular question, but you realize while you are answering that question that there is some information which you need to gather from other department or from other colleagues. And that is a question which is mandatory for you to answer because the tool is not allowing you to proceed to the next page. So in such cases, one easier way to deal with these situations are that in case you want the details from your colleagues, say for example in this area as to what is the impact that is associated with risk or opportunity, you either don't click on that box at all and you don't attempt to answer this question at all, but if you still want to give some details from your end, you can click here and you can just put a comment for your reference that details awaited from other departments. It is very important that you keep a check of such questions wherever you have given a reference and wherever you are awaiting details from your colleagues or from other departments so that once you have all the information readily available with you, you put it in the tool in one go and you submit it. If you don't keep a checklist of such questions, then through the tool you will not get any trigger. There are several questions which are in tabular form. As you can see, EM05. This particular question is asking whether the organization has set targets for itself for these particular areas, which includes reducing GHG emissions, reducing energy consumption, reducing water consumption, and so on, and going up to increasing recycling. Now here in this table, as you can see, the first column is only asking for percentage value. The second is asking for target year. Third column is asking for the base year, which means that when information available, you need to give information for all these three columns. Let us say that you as an organization have a target to reduce operational GHG emission by 3% in next five years and your base year was 2012. So the way you need to give information is 3% target year is next by 2018 and base year was 2012. So it is not important that you need to have target figures for all the particulars mentioned here. Whichever particular area that the organization has indicated the targets and they are included here can be mentioned here. Other than these particulars, if there is any additional information that you may have that there are other areas, sustainability related areas, where the organization has set target for itself, please utilize again the additional information box to give the detail. Again, you can give the reference of the particular question to which the additional information is given.
environment management being a longer aspect is divided into uh, I think four pages so you will have to move from one page to the other but it is not necessary that you fill up the information of the first page fully in order to move to the next page wherever you have information while you're filling up the questionnaire you can put that information and you can continue to move to the next page only cases where it is a mandatory question or a validatory question only then you will be required to fu uh, fully mention the information and as I said in case if you are awaiting information from any departments or colleagues please put a comment there or keep a note with yourself that this question uh, information related to this question is awaited question number 11 is a purely description based question which is asking about the details on the emergency preparedness plan that the organization may have in place. So as you can see the questionnaire it has a mix of both objective which are closed ended question wherein only two, three or maximum five options are given for you to choose from. And there is a mix of descriptive as well as objective questions. So based on the information that you have it's not necessary that to the objective question you have readily information available so you maybe at your end you will be required to analyze and filter the information and then choose the most appropriate option the best way to deal with a questionnaire is that before you start attempting to fill up the questionnaire please go through each and every section in detail ask all the people in your organization who are going to fill the questionnaire to go through each and every questionnaire in detail make a note of those questions wherein you may need cross collaboration with colleagues or departments make a note of those questions where you need to filter and analyze the information and then you may start to attempt to answer the questions in the questionnaire In case there are units of the organization who have applied for specific domains, so if there is a unit of an organization which has applied for environment management, some of the questions from their particular questionnaire will automatically will, will not be visible because they are not applicable to a unit. But in case if there are questions which particularly ask for policy or processes, the unit is required to give policy or processes which are relevant at its level and not at the organization's level and in case at the unit level there is no policy but the unit follows what the organization has in place then the unit needs to create that linkage with the uh, group organization and state that how uh, does the sharing of information happens with the unit and the group organization. Going forward in the questionnaire, if you may see there are questions asking for the percentage of raw material that was sourced sustainably. This is a very uh, straightforward uh, financial uh, driven question. Then uh, similarly the next question after that is asking that what percentage of raw material were recycled raw material. So these questions if you see it from the point of view of the uh, performance assessment model that we have in place they are more of result questions and the, when the assessors are going to assess your questionnaire they would like to see these numbers and see that how much is the organization dependency on local sourcing and on the recycled raw material. There are several questions in the questionnaire which uh, ask for data and also give you the choice to put units as per the way you want to disclose. I will just come to such questions. So it is entirely dependent on the applicants 
to choose the unit that they would like to disclose their data and uh, accordingly give the data. So for example, EM33, it says that please provide total energy consumption data and it's break up by source type, renewable and non-renewable. Here the unit details are mentioned as in you want to give it in megawatts or you want to give it in gigajoules or in ton of oil equivalent or in barrel of oil equivalent. So in case if the organization is already measuring these in a particular unit that is mentioned here, it is easier for you. Otherwise, you may change your figures accordingly to suit the unit which are mentioned here and then give data. You must be look, uh, uh, seeing that in the questionnaire, we are wherever we are asking for data points, we are asking for five-year data. For you as an applicant, uh, you need to understand that the assessment is not based on the performance of a company on that particular year. Of course, it is based on the performance on the assessment year when the assessors look at the processes or the systems that the company has in place. But when they look at the data points or the results, they also see how the trend has been for the organization. So uh, when they are looking at the renewable energy consumed, they will look that what has been the trend for that company whether there are any spikes or lows particular to any data trend. And if there are such uh, spikes or lows, then the assessors would like to know the reasons for that. For a company to be prepared to answer such spikes and lows in case there are any such, it is it will be good that you give already beforehand information on that in additional information box. So for a particular year, if your data points have relatively gone up or down and you know the reason if it is a sector driven uh, thing if it is based on the externalities please mention that in the additional information i will now move on to the next aspect which is the biodiversity Biodiversity is a smaller aspect. It has 10 questions. For those applicants who are our repeat applicants this year, they may notice that biodiversity as an aspect is a new aspect which we have included. It was not part of our uh, application document or questionnaire till last year. The reason of including biodiversity as an aspect is that uh, we see now that there are companies who have started doing a lot of work in this area and it is important from the point of view of sustainability to start assessment of this area as well. Now within biodiversity there are 10 questions. Again these questions are divided into enablers and results. The enabler site focuses on uh, the policy around biodiversity and the long-term plan that the company has in place. On the results site the questionnaire focuses on how is the organization evaluating the impact of its biodiversity initiatives and what are the projects that the company may have in place to uh, as uh, areas of intervention in the space of biodiversity. Here again, as you can see, we start with We start with uh, whether the organization has a policy or commitment statement on biodiversity. The next question asks for the long-term plan of the company on biodiversity and so on. So these 10 questions basically cover the broad area on biodiversity. So far biodiversity has been kept uh, general and broad. Uh, because we also want to see how much information companies are giving. As per our experience, companies have started doing a uh, lot of work in biodiversity. We will go and expand the aspect on biodiversity di diversity, uh, in next year. The next aspect in compliance uh, in uh, 
environment management is compliance to regulation. This is uh, similar from the assessment point of view. This aspect doesn't get scored. This only has uh, the objective of this aspect is to build context to the assessors and to ensure that the relevant regulations that are applicable to the organization and to its sector are being followed or not. So it is entirely left to the companies to decide and to choose which is the regulation which is applicable. And in case if there is any regulation which is applicable and the company has not selected it here, uh, please be assured that the assessors will point it out to you during site assessment that, and will ask you for the reasons why such an applicable regulation has not been clicked here. Other than the mentioned list here, if there is any regulation which doesn't form part of this list, you can click on any other and you can give the details of those regulations here. Now, uh, there is, if you can see in your questionnaires, there is one section on review and submit. This section has been made uh, for your ease so that when you are filling up the questionnaire and you want to quickly refer to that how much questionnaire remains to be answered, this is, this is a brief summary which is available to you. So there is a section wise summary which is available, whether section A has been completed or not. In this questionnaire, you can see that section A to section F has been completed because we were working on this questionnaire. If there is any section which has not been completed by you fully, there will be automatically an update here that this remains incomplete. Uh, it's incomplete. Similarly, there is an as aspect level status summary which gives the details on how many total questions each aspect has how many have been answered and how many are pending and also whether you have given any additional information or not. It is not mandatory that you need to give additional information for each and every aspect. You may choose not to give additional information at all also. But until unless the answered question becomes fully answered, you cannot submit your response. So the, question, the web tool will not allow you to finally submit your responses until unless these show as complete and all your questions under each of the aspect are fully answered. Couple of points before I move on to the uh, queries which I want to highlight. Uh, is that the last day to submit the questionnaire is 26th June. So please ensure that you complete your work well on time. Uh, in case if while filling up the questionnaire there are any further queries which remain to be uh, answered, please get in touch with uh, me or Jayashree and awards team to uh, get answers to your queries. I'll now move on to uh, answering the queries which you may have. Please type in your queries and uh, I will read them out and I'll answer them. Okay, um, 
uh, where the uh, executive summary needs to be filled by the applicant, not the assessors. Assessors would be required to prepare a separate executive summary which will be part of their assessment. This questionnaire as a whole questionnaire has to be filled in by the applicants. Assessors have no role to play in this questionnaire. Madhu, uh, you are asking that does uh, financial year 2014 means 2014-15? Financial year 2014 means the information that you have till March 2015. Vijay, whether we can apply as a company as a whole or as a specific unit, you can apply as a company as a whole as well as for a, for a specific unit. Although now uh, the time for registration is over, so maybe next year you can get in touch with us and we can guide you that from your company you should apply as a company or as a specific unit. But for both you are allowed to apply. Adwet, executive summary, as I said, will uh, be a brief of what you're going to mention in section F. So all the information that you're going to mention in section F in terms of answering the questions uh, which are under each aspect and giving description to uh, the descriptive questions, the executive summary will be a brief of all of that. So the assessors, when they are going to read uh, the executive summary, they will be able to interlink what has been written in the executive summary and what you as a company has answered in section F. Uh, Mr. Behera, once you have filled it and saved it, you can edit it as much as you want, but you cannot make any editing after you have submitted the questionnaire. So once you have submitted the questionnaire, it will become logged. You can still see your questionnaires in a freezed form. So till the time of saving, you can edit it. Also till 26th June, immediately after 26th June, uh, the uh, access to the questionnaire will cease. Uh, no, Karthik, there is no uh, uh, pattern that uh, we can give you on scoring. So uh, that is not uh, for uh, applicants and neither it is available for the assessors. Uh, Vijay, uh, in Boundary you are saying that you have 18 units but in total you have uh, 20 units. That is fine. What you can do is that you, you can utilize one or two columns uh, and you can give information of two or three units together. So, okay, sorry Vijay, I think I read your first comment and not the second one. So you are saying that you only have 10 units, but the row is, you have 18 units, but the row is provided only for 10 units. As I'm saying that uh, you can accumulate uh, information of couple of your units and try to adjust in the 10 rows that are available to you. Madhu, uh, you are asking that since you are only a business unit of the corporation, you don't have a separate term. Running a late behind, um, I will not get into the details of the awards assessment process again. Uh, the slides will be available for uh, explanation uh, in a pre-recorded form. I'll uh, directly go to the questionnaire of on CSR and some of the guidance points uh, for CSR. Uh, CSR uh, as a domain has two main aspects. One is the corporate social responsibility as the main aspect and again compliance to regulation as uh, another aspect. Corporate social responsibility as an aspect has 18 questions uh, which again are divided into enablers and results. Now here uh, in enablers uh, there are questions which ask for policy on CSR, uh, what are the channels through which uh, the organization is implementing its CSR activities, then uh, what are those uh, processes through which uh, the organization is identifying its CSR activities and what is the frequency of identification of CSR activities. 
uh, areas of intervention, then long-term sustainability of CSR projects, engagement with relevant stakeholders, both internal and external, and how is the organization disclosing its CSR-related information publicly. On the results side, there are questions which focuses on the impact assessment of uh, corporate social responsibility, on the employee participation, that is the internal stakeholder, what are the investment that the organization has made, and what are the review mechanisms that the organization may have in place. I'm sure there are uh, some people who have uh, joined the uh, webinar only for uh, to attend the uh, corporate social responsibility domain. So uh, for them, I would uh, like to take them through uh, the sections, uh, section A to E very quickly. Uh, as you can see in the questionnaire, the instruction page is the landing page. Uh, all the key points regarding the questionnaire are mentioned here. Uh, now here, um, you can also go to the guidance document whose reference I had given when I was uh, uh, basically when I was basically dealing with the environment management questionnaire. So this is the link to the guidance document. You can click on this and there is a PDF document which is a guidance document which you can download. Basically the idea of guidance document is to give you a perspective on how the assessment takes place and what are the major elements of assessment that you also as an applicant can keep in mind while filling up the questionnaire. Now some key points here are that this questionnaire is a, a time driven questionnaire. So as you can see here, there is a 30 minute session timeout. <laughs> This is um, a clock which will keep indicating how much time is remaining for your session to end. Till the time you are saving your questionnaire, this clock will automatically revise its time. But in case if you are not working on the questionnaire, but you are working on some other page on your um, laptop or on your computers, uh, time to time you will get an alert from the tool that your session is about to expire. In case if there is any information that you have input it in the web tool but you have not saved it, it will get lost if until unless you do a manual saving which means that there is no auto save function which is there in the web tool. So please ensure that you keep saving the data till the time you are dealing with the questionnaire. The next section is section A which basically asks for uh, the information on uh, the company. Most of the information is pulled from application of intent as you can see and you don't have to refill it. Uh, there are certain details like details of highest ranking official or the contact person for sustainability award. They need to be mentioned here. Now here you can see that there are certain fields which are red marked like uh, red star mark which means that they are mandatory fields and once you start attempting these particular sections, you need to fully fill up this particular section to, in order to save and move forward to the next page. Now if you don't have the details yet or you don't want to put in the details of your people uh, when you are uh, at the questionnaire, don't attempt this question at all and move on to the next section. Once you have the relevant details, you can attempt to answer this question fully. Questions like these, the last part where uh, it is asking for alternate contact person, details are not mandatory and left it to you to put, to put the details if in case if you want. Section B is uh, a section asking for a statement of approval from your side. So this question, uh, section should ideally be filled towards the end after the review of the questionnaire has been done by your uh, relevant senior people and just before the submission because once you say I accept it cannot be changed. So please ensure that uh, one is that this particular paragraph or this section is signed by the senior most person who takes the responsibility of the information that you are going to input in the questionnaire. Section C is uh, a section which asks for company related information. Now this section, all the sections from section A to section E are not scored uh, uh, from the point of assessment. But they are important from the point of view of building the context to the assessors. And section C is one of the most important section to build the context of the company to the assessors. Hence fill this section with uh, good clarity. 
one important uh, section here in section C is uh, C3, which asks for scope of the application. Now, scope of the application means that uh, from your organization, uh, what are those activities uh, or uh, areas that you want to be assessed? In case if you want to put a boundary to assessment, you can do that and you can only mention the activities and their specific locations on which you want the assessment to take place. Now please ensure that when you mention such things in the scope of application, all the relevant information that you're going to put in section F should be relevant to what you have put in scope of the application here. So no information in section F should be of area which has been excluded from the scope of application because the assessors are not going to assess that particular area and will leave it. Similarly, the scope of application will be taken into consideration when uh, the site visit is going to happen in order to choose the relevant sites which can be visited in case your organization qualifies for site assessment stage. There are several rows that you can add, maximum 10 rows you can add here in case there are more locations that you want to add but and they, they go beyond 10, please try to accumulate your information in two or three rows or in 10 rows and uh, limit it to 10 rows. Section C5 uh, is again important which asks for product related information for your company. So the top five products that you may have uh, their specific details on the turnover, production, uh, their share of turnover and market share. As you can see in the production output, there is a specific mention of the unit. So when you are mentioning your production per output, please specify in which unit you are mentioning that data. And the note to explain this production output is explained in note number one. Moving on to the next section, which is section D. Section D is, uh, is basically uh, the executive summary of the section of section F. So whatever information you're going to put in section F will uh, become part of section D. The word limit of executive summary or this section is 750 words. Uh, the idea of executive summary here is that all the information that you're going to put in section F uh, should briefly be mentioned in the executive summary here. Uh, this is important because uh, when the assessors are going to assess your particular questionnaire, they will be able to draw linkages from executive summary to the section F, which is a sustainability aspect. Section E is self-explanatory because it only asks for uh, the details on any abbreviations that you are going to use in section F. Uh, and uh, also for the ease of assessors who are going to do the assessment of your questionnaire. So mainly uh, abbreviations will be used by you as an applicant in questions which are descriptive or in additional information boxes which are part of section F. So if you are using any abbreviations there, please give an explanation of those abbreviations here. Moving on to section F which is the questionnaire mainly. Uh, which asks for specific question. This uh, section has been divided into both uh, objective as well as descriptive questions. As you uh, must have already seen that there are specific questions which are very closed ended and which give you specific options to choose from. These questions, uh, it's not necessary and we understand that some of this information may not be readily available with you. So in case if you want to filter the information and then choose to answer uh, the uh, particular question, you can do that. The best way of answering the questionnaire is to read the questionnaire first fully from instruction page going up to uh, the last section, which is section F, understanding the relevance of each section and then trying to attempt the question. Now, what will uh, this will help also help you in noting down some of those areas or some of those questions which may not be readily available with you and which but which may be readily available with your colleagues in other departments. So you can circulate the information internally 
and you can ask for that information. Once you have all the information ready with you, you can start uh, populating the questionnaire. Now, uh, this questionnaire can be filled up by multiple people within the organization. So multiple sections can be attempted by multiple people at the same time. The email that must have come to your inboxes from Sustainability Awards team can be shared internally to as many people as you want. They can access the questionnaire by clicking on the link. So I'll just show you the email which must have come to your inboxes. This is the email that you had received uh, um, once the questionnaire was shared. Please share this email with all the relevant people who are going to answer the questionnaire. And uh, they can just click here and access the questionnaire. And they can also help you in filling up the different sections of the questionnaire. Please don't attempt to answer one section of the questionnaire uh, by multiple people because in that case there will be overlap of information and we uh, as CII we will not be able to retrieve the data saved by multiple people for the same questionnaire. So if you look at the questions specifically under corporate social responsibility as you can see the first question is a descriptive question which is asking about the details on the policies of CSR. So if as an organization if you have a policy uh, then please give a description of that and also highlight the focus areas here. So you need to choose the first radio button and then the box here, the description box will get activated for you to input the answers. Now in case if you um, choose a radio button which also has a supplementary description box or any further information that you are required to put in, your data will not get saved and it will always be highlighted in this red uh, format indicating that this question remains unanswered. So please fully answer this question, only then you will be allowed to move on the next section or on the next page. In case while filling up any specific question, you feel that you still need more information from your colleagues or uh, from other departments. There are two ways to do uh, to answer such question. One is that you just select that there is no information available and keep a reference of those questions whom, uh, to whom you are going to reply later. Or select yes, the organization has a policy that highlights its focus area and give a reference comment for your benefit, uh, for example, information awaited from other departments. Again, keep a note of such questions where uh, you are indicating that you are going to come back to the questionnaire and fill it up again. So you don't lose out uh, before submission of the questionnaire such questions for which you may have collated the information but forgot to put in the information in the questionnaire. Once you do this and then if you try to save the questionnaire, then your answer will be accepted. Uh, but please do come back and input the relevant information in the uh, descriptive box. Moving further, uh, there are questions in CSR which ask, which are of uh, the format which is given in CC06 that does the organization invest in following areas, uh, for example, education, public health, child right. Here you can see that the check boxes will only get activated once you click on the first radio button. So only if you say that yes, the organization invest, only then you will be allowed to check the boxes uh, which are given in the list below. Now it's not important that you need to have investment in each of the areas mentioned here. You may have investment in only one of the areas mentioned here, say for example child rights. So you can choose the relevant area in which the organization has made the investment, one or multiple areas. In case if you choose any other, that means that from the list above, the uh, investment area has not been mentioned, you can mention your investment area here.
Now, as you can see, there is an additional information uh, pop-up uh, which comes. Once you click on this, the purpose of this additional information box is that any information that you want to give over and above the answers that you have given in the questionnaire, you can give in the additional information. The word limit to additional information box is 750 words. Only text can be included here. Any graph, any graphical image, or any table cannot be inserted in this box. Again, if you are giving any additional information with reference to a specific question, say for example, if you want to give information with reference to CC010, anything that you have missed putting here or your uh, description box does not allow you to further add information here. You can choose additional information box. Please give reference to the question basis which you are giving the information and then give your details. In case if the information given by you is not specific to a particular question, then you can freely write the information to supplement the answers given in the questionnaire. Always save your work before closing. When you are going to read uh, the questions in the, uh, in the uh, aspect of CSR, you will see that the questions are divided into uh, enablers and results. And when I say enablers, uh, it means that there are questions which ask for process. There are questions which ask for engagement with uh, internal and external stakeholders. There are questions which ask for the role of leadership in this particular domain. On the results side, there are questions which will ask for data points, uh, impact numbers, and um, uh, also descriptive questions which may ask for the result that the organization has achieved in this particular area of corporate social responsibility. So if you look at uh, CC11, which asks for who has the ultimate responsibility for CSR activities in the organization, there are five options available to you. You can choose whichever is most appropriate for your organization. These options basically indicates that how is CSR being dealt in an organization? So is the board level commitment there for CSR? And if it is there, then automatically there has to be a board level committee. As per Companies Act uh, Section 135, there is a mandate already in place, but it may not necessarily apply to each and every company, only the selected companies. So uh, whatever is the responsibility and whosoever has the ultimate responsibility uh, can be chosen by the company here. Moving further, there are questions, as you can see, CC14 type, which ask for data figures from the organization. Now here the purpose is to understand that in CSR, what are the specific areas of intervention that the company has and how much investment the company is doing in these particular areas. As you must have seen that the information that is being asked specifically on data points, it is not specific to one year. It is spread over five years. The reason for this is that the assessment is not based on the performance of one particular year. Rather, it is based on the trends that the five years are going to show. Now here, an important point for you as an applicant is that in a particular year, if there is any spike or if there is any low that you have experienced as an organization in a particular area, and you know the reason for that uh, high or low, please provide that reason in the additional information box because that will help the assessor understand the reason of such uh, increase or decrease. In case if you don't provide the reason, that is also OK. But then in case your company qualifies for site assessment, the assessors will come and ask you for this kind of a trend fluctuation. Always, in case if there are questions which has a note attached to it, please read the notes because this is a CSR related uh, domain. There are questions which ask for impact numbers or the benefits or the outcomes. 
there are several questions which are based on that and these benefit outcomes or impact are not necessarily uh, restricted to quantitative impact generated or quantitative benefit so there are notes explaining that even qualitative uh, impact or benefits can also be mentioned so it's important that when you're filling up the questionnaire if there are notes available please read these notes and then provide the information accordingly Here again, we come to compliance to regulations uh, uh, aspect. This aspect again is only to build the context of the company to the assessors. This particular aspect does not get scored. The idea is that the uh, company should tell that what are the regulations which are applicable to uh, it as an organization and to the sector. And in case if there are regu any regulation which are not mentioned in the list given here, the company can choose to indicate those regulation by clicking on any other and giving the details in the box here. So the, as you can see these regulations are very specific to the social side. But as I said this is not a detailed list. There can be regulations which are not mentioned here. So please uh, feel free to choose any other and provide an explanation to or give the details of the regulation that uh, is applicable to you and as an organization you are following. The last uh, section is for your benefit for you to see the summary of how much remains to be answered and how much uh, remains to be uh, is still uh, unanswered. Um, so this uh, particular section gives the detail of the summary of uh, uh, the information that has been given by you and how much information is still to be given by you. So as you can see, section A to F, whether that has been completed or still remains incomplete is something that will be given automatically by the web tool when you're filling up the questionnaire. Similarly, there is an aspect level status summary which you can refer to that and the particular aspect like corporate social responsibility, there are total questions 19. How many have been answered and how many are pending? This particular questionnaire has been answered fully. So that is why it is indicating that there are zero pending. In case if there are several questions unanswered, then the number will be indicated here. The question number, how many questions are not unanswered uh, and giving specific details on which question have been unanswered will not be given. Only the cumulative figure of answered and unanswered will be given here. Similarly, whether additional information has been given by the applicant or not will be uh, given here. It is not mandatory that as an applicant you give additional information to each and every aspect. It is only uh, for the provision of giving supplementary information and uh, you may choose to give information and additional information or not. That is left to you. You will only be allowed to submit your responses when there are zero pending here and this summary is showing totally complete. Before that, your responses cannot be submitted. When you are working on your questionnaire, you can keep editing the information provided until unless you hit the submit button. So till the time you are putting in your data and you are just saving your data, you can keep going back to your questionnaire and you can keep editing the data. Once you submit the questionnaire, your questionnaire will be locked and you cannot access it further to make any changes. It will be visible to you in form of a freezed questionnaire, but you will not be allowed to make any changes. The same will happen immediately after 26 June in case there is, there is no extension. The questionnaire will automatically will be ceased from doing any uh, changes or any additions to the questionnaire. I would now uh, like to take up the questions. Uh, so please uh, write your questions and uh, I'll quickly answer your questions on uh, the corporate social responsibility domain. If there are any questions on the next domain, sustainable uh, supply chain, I'll deal with them once I have gone through the supply chain questionnaire. So I'll give 15 minutes to the questioner of uh, CSR and then we will 
come to the domain excellence of supply chain. Uh, Mr. Behra, I'm just taking your question as the first question where you are saying that you are a division of Tata Steel and applying for domain excellence in CSR. In company details, asking details of highest ranking officials should we fill the details top man of our division or the company that is CMD. Um, uh, you can also give the details of the MD. Uh, the purpose of asking for the highest ranking official, there are two purposes. One is that one, we know uh, that whether, so all the qualification information about the company will go to the highest ranking officials. So for example, if you emerge as the winner company after the end of the assessment cycle, the first email that will go will be to the highest ranking official. If you don't emerge as a winner and if you have qualified a particular stage or you have not qualified a particular stage, even that communication will go to the highest ranking official. The another purpose of asking the details of highest ranking official is that these people will be invited to the award ceremony which is going to take place in December. So accordingly you can choose that whose detail you would like to give and that is the MD or the top man of your division. Anuradha, I'm not sure about your question. Uh, before I answer your question about whether uh, it has been less than two years that CSR has been kicked off, uh, well, uh, I would like to also know from you that how long have you been into existence as an organization? Uh, so how, how long have you uh, existed as an organization? Uh, Mr. Behra, if Section C uh, asks for name of top three, if you only have, uh, uh, it's only the name that is required of the competitor, nothing more. Uh, Tarang, the PPT will be available in a pre-recorded format after the session is over. And we will share the link of the pre-recorded, uh, the recorded webinar with all of you uh, by the end of day today or by tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Behra, you are asking if Section B asks us to provide evidences of our claims, in which form it will be. Uh, I think you'll have to reframe your question and can you specifically, okay. So basically what Section B is saying that uh, whatever you are answering in Section F or whatever you are answering in the other part of the questionnaire, you should be able to provide an evidence to that in case if there is a site visit which happens. So for example, if you are saying that I have a CSR policy in place, then in case if the site visit takes place for your company and assessors ask for you to show the policy, then please provide them with a policy and give them the details of the policy. Similarly, in case, uh, uh, in, in case of corporate social responsibility, every company which is going to qualify for site assessment will be required to take the assessment team to the communities, especially those where there are intervention work going on. So that the assessors can see that whatever work the company is doing, the assessors are able to see the relevant evidence or relevant result with respect to that. That is what Section B is stating.
sorry ramya there is no provision to attach photograph or videos uh, the questionnaire is does not uh, allow the organizations to attach any additional uh, attachment to it and even the additional information box that you have in place will only allow you to put text nothing more than that adwait as i said uh, the uh, companies projects factories communities will be visited from september end to november first week only if the company has qualified for site assessment uh, anuradha uh, if you are in existence for 6 years and your csr has only kicked off in last 2 years then please provide information for the amount of years uh, since the time that csr has uh, been into place and uh, accordingly uh, so i think the in your case uh, what will happen is that all the result related question the data points will only be for two years and all the process related data you will be able to provide for this year so uh, that's a limitation that you will have because if the csr work has only started in last two years you can only provide it to for two years so that is fine with us no mr bera you cannot send us photographs because we don't accept that and uh, we don't accept any additional reports so any information if we required from our side before the site assessment happens we will ask on our own but we don't uh, 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 will not take any photographs or any evidences beforehand thank you i think uh, Uh, most of the questions okay there is one last question in the scope of the application section is one uh anuradha it is more geographical area and uh, also thematic in case if it is a uh, if if your corporation has uh, applied as a, at a group level and it has multiple businesses then you want all the businesses to be assessed and when uh, also all the geographies to be assessed but mainly it is from geographical point of view okay thank you uh, thank you very much i'll move on to the uh, supply chain domain in next 5 minutes uh, again as i said that uh, if there are any questions which still remain unanswered and i have not been able to dealt with them in the time that we have please do send them to sustainability awards at cii.in i look at those questions and i'll get back to you uh, by tomorrow thank you uh again uh, just uh, referring back to the objective of the webinar uh, the idea is to understand the assessment methodology and to understand the various sections of the questionnaire and to help you resolve uh, any queries that you may have regarding uh, the questionnaire in terms of the meaning of any specific question or any technical issues that you uh, you are facing while filling up the questionnaire uh it is important that as an applicant you also understand that what is the basis of sustainability performance assessment this is uh, the model that we use to assess the performance of the companies from sustainability lens the key elements here are attributes aspects and red r attributes are mainly uh, based on the sustainability excellence model that we have in place which has been adapted from the efqm model where the emphasis is on enablers results and learning and review 
the idea is to see that uh, how well is the organization prepared in terms of its systems and approaches uh, and processes to um, achieve the targets or the goals that it has set for itself. And after achieving the set targets and goals, uh, what are the learnings that the organization is uh, gaining out of uh, the results and how is it improvising on the existing processes through those learnings. So as you can see under enablers we look at uh, the leadership structure. We also see that how is sustainability embedded in the governance structure of the organization. Uh, what is also seen is that how well is the stakeholder engagement process or mechanism in the organization. How is each and every stakeholder being viewed from sustainability angle. Then how is the organization mobilizing its key resources and what are the systems or processes that the company has in place. When I talk about processes, it also means that whether there is a structured process that the company has in place or it has ad hoc processes. Under results, uh, all kind of results are seen. So uh, if uh, it is, um, it's not limited only to the key uh, financial performance results but uh, relevant results with respect to the environment, with respect to social, uh, with respect to the economic are also seen under the results side. In learning and review, uh, what is seen is that how well is the review mechanism in an organization, how is the uh, organization making use of its learnings and how it is ultimately feeding into the enabler side in order to improvise and increase the efficiency levels of its processes. For uh, get a detailed uh, view on each of these attributes, you can refer to the guidance document uh, whose link is given in the questionnaire and you can download the PDF and you can read the definitions of each and uh, every attribute that is mentioned here. There are particular weights which are assigned to each of these attributes. Uh, as you can see, uh, leadership has a weight of 10 and processes has a weight of 20. These weights are mainly from the point of view of scoring and also to emphasize the importance of the attribute in the questionnaire. The questionnaire that you have uh, received uh, has questions dealing with each and every attribute here. Although specifically they are not divided into uh, uh, the questions that you have received uh, that is done at the back end and you may not be able to see it. But each uh, question has uh, if it is a leadership question or a process question is something that has been taken care of. So the entire sustainability excellence model has been embedded in the questions that you can see in your questionnaire. We have dealt with environment management and corporate social responsibility in the previous sections. Uh, we'll deal with uh, sustainable supply chain. Uh, in this session where uh, sustainable supply chain as a domain has two main aspects which is the supply chain and compliance to regulation. As you can see compliance to regulation is a common aspect across the three domains. So for supply chain this uh, aspect is also same as what was mentioned in the environment management and corporate social responsibility. For the awards process, uh, just to give, give you a glance of uh, what is the awards assessment process looks like. Uh, the first stage is the application stage where we uh, register the companies uh, to participate in sustainability awards and they register to us through the application of intent which all of you have uh, filled up and sent to us. Basis which we give you access to the questionnaire. Once you submit the questionnaire to us, uh, for the main excellence the last date is 26 June. Uh, we will do a preliminary screening uh, at our end. Most of the uh, information that you're going to uh, put in the questionnaire will get automatically scored in the web tool. So while you're filling up the questionnaire, your questions are being automatically scored. So 80% uh, of the screening happens at the tool level. But uh, we will still look at the questions and see that how much information has been given by all of you in the questionnaire. Now the selected uh, applicant applications that we are going to receive uh, will be given to uh, the assessors to be assessed. Assessors devote almost a uh, thousand man hours on each application to assess. And uh, this is the stage of desk assessment wherein um, the assessors are required to do the desk assessment of the submitted questionnaires and give assessment of their findings. 
once we receive the findings of assessors the results are given to our jury who indicates to us the companies which are qualifying for site assessment these site assessments takes place uh, in the third stage which starts from september end and go up to november first week uh, based on the selected companies and uh, com a communication email will go to all the applicants uh, when the site visit can happen the dates are blocked according to the availability of the applicant as well as the assessors who are going to visit particular site ultimately after the site visit is over uh, the uh, assessors are going to revise their assessment the purpose of site visit is to see that the information given by the applicant in their respective questionnaire uh, what is the evidence that the assessors can find at the time of site assessment so if the organization has stated anything in the questionnaire there should be evidence relevant to that and that is what the assessors are going to find out at the time of site assessment based on the evidences gathered and any information gap that they must have found at the time of disk assessment if they are able to fulfill that information gap they will revise their assessment results and they are going to submit it to uh, the awards team and finally uh, which uh, the results will be given to the jury who will take a final call on finalizing the winners for sustainability awards once the assessment cycle is over which gets over in december uh, there are feedback reports which are given out to each and every company which applies for sustainability award irrespective of whether the company is winning a recognition or not now as applicants you must have received this email in your inboxes to access the questionnaire as you can see uh, there is a link provided here through which you can um, access the questionnaire this email can be forwarded internally to as many people as you want especially those who are going to be part of uh, submitting uh, filling the questionnaire uh, from an organization because um, we know that uh, there are multiple people who would like to fill up the questionnaire and who have the relevant details of particular questions so you can keep uh, sharing this email to uh, your colleagues uh, multiple people can fill up multiple sections of the questionnaire please ensure that multiple people don't fill up one section of the questionnaire because that may lead to overlaps and uh, thus leading to uh, information not getting recorded at all you have already seen that the questionnaire has six sections section a to f uh, the applicant registration information is section a which ask for the relevant detail about the organization uh, section b is uh, the statement of approval or authenticity this ideally should be filled up towards the end when the ap uh, application has been reviewed by your respective senior colleagues and there is Uh, an approval that has been received um, from your senior people of the information that you are giving in the questionnaire because once you put in the key details in section b you will not be able to change it section c is a general information section but very important because that builds the context of the company i'll just take you through the section c details here so this is the questionnaire which you must have received uh, going to section c as you can see it has various uh, sub sections asking for the relevant details on the questionnaire uh, scope of application here uh, means that which is c3 that you as an organization can set boundaries to the application uh, or set boundaries to the assessment in which the assessment should take place so if you don't want any particular area of the company particular mines or facilities that you don't want to be included for assessment you need not mention in the activity and the location you can keep adding more rows to add more activity areas and locations if there are more than 10 activity areas that you want to mention please uh, combine some of these areas because the maximum rows available to you are only 10 rows so you can combine some of the information of a particular activity and you can accordingly put in c3 so this uh, section doesn't get scored at all however this is important from the assessment point of view because it builds the context of the company to the assessors the next section is section d which is an executive summary section 
Now the uh, objective of this section is that uh, whatever information you provide in section F, a reflection of the same should come in section D in a brief form. So all the answers that you are going to give in section F, all, all the um, options that you are going to choose in section F should briefly be mentioned in section D in a form of a story. Uh, you need not go beyond uh, what is going to be mentioned in section F. So if you are applying for supply chain, please limit your executive summary only to the supply chain business of the organization. The word limit here is again 750 words. So automatically if your executive summary ex is exceeding 750 words, you will get an alert from the tool that you are not allowed to input more information. Section E uh, is the section asking for the details or explanation on the abbreviations used. So in section F or anywhere in any other section, if you are using any abbreviations, mainly in the description or additional information boxes, for the ease of assessors, please give explanation to the abbreviations that you are using. Now before I move on to section F, a couple of important points for uh, you as an applicant. If you go to instructions page, you can see that there is a link of guidance document available to you. Once you click on this link, you can download the PDF and get a detail on how the assessment is carried out or what are the important points that you as an applicant can keep in mind while uh, filling up the questionnaire. As you can see, there is a timer running here. Uh, this indicates that how much time you as an applicant has to uh, before the logout happens. The questionnaire is designed to uh, for a login of 30 minutes. If uh, you cross 30 minutes, the tool will automatically log out. But uh, if there is any information that you have inputted in any of the sections and you have not saved it, that information will be lost because the uh, tool does not run on an auto save mode hence it is important that you uh, keep saving your work manually before the time runs out a very important point for those uh, companies who uh, plan to apply in 2016 uh, the questionnaire that you are going to submit this year and if you apply for, uh, for awards in 2016 in the same award category, you will be given uh, the access to the questionnaire which you are going to fill this year. So uh, the filled questionnaire will be available to you for any edit that you want to make and any additional information that you want to put for 2016. So as an applicant, as a repeat applicant, you will not be required to fill the information from the scratch. Supply chain as a domain has uh, two main aspects, which is uh, one is the sub sustainable supply chain and the other one is compliance to regulation. Sustainable supply chain has around 28 questions. Uh, these 28 questions, if we look at from the point of view of the performance assessment model, then it is divided into enablers and results. On the enabler side, we have information uh, or questions asking for policy and the coverage of its policy on supply chain. Then uh, any specific sustainability goals that the company may have in place for supply chain. Uh, if, there, if the organization is carrying out risk analysis or for its potential supplier or existing suppliers to identify economic, social and governance risk. Then uh, organization plan or targets for suppliers audit. How is the organization building capacities of its uh, suppliers on sustainability issues? Uh, the commitment of the organization on local sourcing and so on. On the result side, there are questions which ask for that in case if the organization has identified sustainability goals for the supply chain, then what is the performance on those goals? So the result indicators on those sustainability goals set by the organization for supply chain. Similarly, if the organization has mentioned that there are capacity building uh, programs on sustainability issues for its supply chain, then what is the coverage of capacity building programs? and then going on to the audits of uh, supplier site and finally there are questions asking for the review mechanism that the organization may have in place 
to look at its supply chain and how is the senior management involved in the review process. Now, uh, supply chain here by the name does not mean only the supply chain partners or suppliers of the organization. Sustainable supply chain also includes your dealers, vendors, contractors, uh, both your upstream and downstream. Coming to the sustainability aspects, uh, if you look at the questions, uh, there are SC0 fund, SC is an abbreviation for supply chain, SC01 is asking for, it's a closed ended question giving applicants four options to choose from for the question which is asking whether the organization has a policy of code of conduct for suppliers. Uh, whatever is the most suitable option to you as an organization, you can choose from these questions, uh, from these options available. Uh, supply chain uh, as an aspect has both uh, closed-ended as well as open-ended question. So there are questions which are very similar to SC01 as in the format where uh, straightforward options are given to you to choose from and then there are options which are more descriptive uh, questions. So for example if you come to SC06 which asks for organization sustainability related goals and targets. It is a very descriptive question because here the information that is being asked is that one is that whether the organization has sustainability goals and if it has then please give a description of those sustainability goals and also explain the action plan that the organization may have to deal with the sustainability goals and targets. Now in uh, such questions, if you, uh, while you're filling up the questionnaire, if you don't have all the relevant information and uh, you want information uh, from other departments of your organization, then for your reference, you can put a comment here that details awaited from other departments. or you don't attempt to answer this question at all at that stage. In case if you are putting a comment like this, please make a note for yourself also that once you have that information, you come back to that question and you fill up the details. Otherwise, you will lose out on giving the relevant details here. Now there are questions like these, uh, like SC14, which ask for uh, multiple, uh, which give multiple options to the organization to choose from. So, and this will only get activated, this list of checkboxes, once you click on the first option. So the question is, does the organization engage with sub-tier suppliers? If you say yes, the organization engages, then you can choose multiple options from the checkboxes and uh, in uh, reference to the information that you may have as an organization and you can give your answer. If you choose any other, please provide a description of any other before uh, and not leave it blank. You can also utilize additional information box here which is available for your benefit. Here you can give supplementary information uh, over and above what is being asked in the questions also, you can give any uh, additional information with respect to a specific question. So if uh, there is more information that you would like to give for a particular question, give reference to that particular question here and mention the details of the additional information that you would like to give. If it is a general additional information and not specific to a particular question, then you can choose uh, and write the details as you may want. Again here the word limit is 750 words and the moment you cross that word limit you will get an indication from the tool that uh, you don't have any more space for additional text. It is not mandatory that you put additional information for uh, the questions because uh, 
this is just a supplementary information box so it is entirely left to the organization to choose whether they want to give information uh, additional information or not coming to questions like sc19 which are uh, uh, numeric or uh, financial uh, driven questions here uh, when you when you choose when uh, these uh, questions are available they will automatically indicate the kind of number values that you need to give as you can see here the number expected here is in percentage form so please ensure that if you don't have a percentage number you convert the available information into percentage number and then give relevant information details here any textual information or any uh, uh, text will not get accepted here only numbers will get accepted here now as you can see uh, i try to save the information without filling up the details for supplier audit for uh, this particular question so every time you are filling a questionnaire uh, a question and if the relevant fields in the question has not been answered fully this indication will come to you from the tool that this question needs to be answered fully only then you can proceed with saving or moving to the next or previous page so until unless you don't uh, put all the relevant details your information will not get saved and in case if you are attempting to answer the, these kind of questions and you don't have the relevant details here again my guidance is that don't attempt these questions at all at that stage or in case if you've already inputted some figure here that you have and you are awaiting numbers from other departments still please uh, just mention any random number for example one person for it to get accepted or just say no information available keep a note of such questions in your notebook and once you have all the information available come back to these questions and put uh, or populate these questions with the relevant details that you may have now as you can see that all the data uh, driven questions we are asking for five year data the reason is that the assessment is based on uh, not just the performance of an organization for that particular year but also the performance of the organization in last five years looking at the trends of the organization in that particular area the reason of looking at trends is to understand the fluctuations that have taken place and also to understand the reasons for those fluctuations so if there are any uh, uh, highs or any lows that the organization may have experienced uh, as an applicant you can choose to give the reasons for those uh, fluctuations in additional information by giving reference to that particular question uh, it's not mandatory to give reasons at this stage but it is always beneficial because when the assessors are assessing your information if they have those reasons with them it is better that uh, they will also do a fair uh, assessment to the information given in case if the information is not given by you then uh, in a, and you qualify for site assessment the assessors would when they visit your site they will ask you for the reasons of such fluctuations moving on to the next aspect which is compliance to regulation now this aspect again uh, uh, is common to all the other award categories uh, when you come to compliance to regulation it gives you a, gives you a list of all the regulations that uh, are common and applicable to the organization or to the sector that uh, to which the organization belongs to now in case if there are any specific regulations that may be applicable to you and are not mentioned in this list please utilize any other box which is at the bottom of the table and give the details of that regulation
Now these regulations are also looked by the assessors very closely. So in case if there is any applicable regulation for your sector and has not been clicked by you uh, while filling up the questionnaire, they, or the assessors will question you on the regulations when they are going to visit the site. As you can see, the table has been divided into economic regulations, environment regulations, and social regulations. So this is a set of environment regulations, environment health and safety regulations, and then there are regulations about social laws. And so these are very common regulations that are applicable. As I said, any specific regulation that has been missed from here, please utilize any other box and give the details. The last section of the application is uh, more for your, uh, to give you a facilitation in terms of uh, the uh, information given by you. This is just a summary section indicating that how much part, uh, how much of the questionnaire has been filled and how much still remains to be answered. As you can see, the first part of this uh, section is about section A to F, whether it has been completed or not. And there is a table below it which basically gives aspect-wise details on the total question it has, how many answered and how many pending, and whether additional information has been given by you or not. So before you submit, you please look at this summary and also this will also help you uh, in understanding whether there are any pending sections or any pending questions which still remain to be answered. You can only submit the questionnaire after you have fully answered the questionnaire, otherwise you will not be allowed to submit the questionnaire. Again, after 26 June, the questionnaire will not be available to you for any um, further edits because that's the last date of submission of the questionnaire. While you are making the changes in the questionnaire and inputting the information and saving it, you can keep going back and making edits or any changes that you want. Uh, once you hit the submit button, and you have totally filled the questionnaire, you will not be able to make any changes to the questionnaire because then your questionnaire will become locked and will not be available for any further edits. Okay, that is from my end. If there are any questions, then I am ready to take those. Uh, and. Uh, you can add your questions and uh, I can answer them. Uh, Dhaval, I can see your question. Uh, you're asking if it is possible to receive a Word docx version of the questionnaire so that you can fill information with the teams offline. Uh, no, Dhaval, uh, that is not a possibility because we also don't have a DOCX version of the questionnaire. Uh, the questionnaire is only available online uh, through the medium that we have shared. So there is no DOCX or any Excel version which is available of the questionnaire. In case if you want to share it with your people, I suggest you share the online link with them and ask them to go through the questionnaire and also then you can sit down and uh, look at the questions which need to be discussed and once you have the, all the information ready with you, you can uh, fill up the questionnaire. Uh, there is no provision of giving any additional information in terms of brochures or video links or photo galleries because that is not required. Uh, because uh, uh, we don't uh, give uh, this provision to the companies. So uh, photos, brochures, any graphs, any PPTs uh, is something that is not required for this assessment. In case if there is any specific information which we need uh, for assessment, we will get in touch with you separately. Uh, yes, Meghna, there is a word limit to the description. It's 750 words. So wherever there is a description box or additional information box or executive summary, Everywhere the word limit is 750 words in total. Uh, no, Advait, uh, the web tool does will not allow you to add charts, graphs uh, in the answer areas. So you only have to give numeric values or uh, text. Uh, 
I guess that is the last set of questions. Uh, uh, in case if there are any further questions that you may have, you can please write to Sustainability Awards at CII.in. I'll get back to you with your uh, questions and uh, we'll answer them. Uh, yes, Adwait, I can see another question that is coming from you. If the projection and distribution sales area, then do we have to share information about suppliers? No, in that case, if, it, if you're talking about uh, a project that has uh, distribution and sales, then you need to give information about dealers and not suppliers. As I said in the beginning of my presentation, that when we say sustainable supply chain, we are not just referring to suppliers uh, by the name of suppliers. Here we are referring to suppliers, vendors, contractors, dealers, both upstream and downstream. So uh, coming back to your question, if you want to refer to any work that has been done uh, for specifically for dealers, then uh, please uh, uh, give specific details about the dealers or your sales team as you may want. Okay, uh, I think that was the last set of questions. Thank you very much. Again, I repeat, any further questions you may have, uh, you can write back to us uh, at any time and we'll get in touch with you. This presentation will be available in a recorded format and we will share the link of the recorded presentation uh, by end of day today or tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you.